Okay, hi there, welcome back. Uh, it's Jeff here with another video, this time on the UK economy. If it's okay with you, I'd like to spend a few minutes thinking about uh, a concept, an idea that's become hugely topical just in the last year or so. And it's perhaps something that a lot of students will be writing about in their exams in 2022. The concept is stagflation. So what is stagflation? Well, the noun means significantly higher inflation coinciding with near stagnant growth. So it's, a, it's an unwelcome combination of high inflation, slowing growth and perhaps rising unemployment. And this chart taken from the FT uh, is a nice way of showing what's been happening in the UK. Uh, you can see that the rate of inflation is now well above, well, <laughs> over four times the, uh, uh, the official target of inflation. Um, I think the latest inflation rate was 9%. Uh, this chart shows inflation at 7%. So inflation rising, but growth slowing, slowing down. And of course, this is the, the threat of stagflation. So it refers to a combination of slow growth, rising unemployment, and high and rising inflation. And typically, stagflation is associated with the external shocks, so, for example, spikes in the, the world prices of key raw materials like copper and zinc and also um, and fertilizers and things like that. And energy prices such as oil and gas, especially affecting those countries that rely heavily on those imported commodities and sources of energy. When we get stagflation, uh, it can become very difficult and problematic for policymakers, including central banks such as the Bank of England, because on the one hand, Businesses and employees are suffering from uh, slow growing or falling production, which means they're making less profit. People are at risk of losing their jobs. Whilst prices are also going up more quickly, which threatens the real incomes, the real wages of people, and also can worsen income inequality. So stagflation is now appearing in many headlines. I've just picked out a couple for you from the Financial Times. Uh, stagflation looms in the UK as economic growth grinds to a halt. War and stagflation threatens the global economy as pandemic recovery slows. So stagflation is becoming a topic. If you put into the Google search, you'll get a lot of interesting news articles. The Bank of England, uh, in their May 2022 inflation report, said the following. The Bank of England can't do anything about the global supply problems or the energy prices that are currently pushing up inflation. Hinting at kind of central bank impotence in this, uh, this difficult external environment. OK, so what might be causing stagflation in the UK at the moment? Well, clearly the biggest single contributory factor is uh, or are external factors, such as the big rise in world oil and gas prices. Uh, and that's, of course, increasing costs for many firms, not just transport businesses, but firms that use oil and gas as essential inputs. And many businesses are passing on these cost rises to consumers in the form of higher prices. A really good example, of course, is the energy price cap. So off what has now always forecast to raise the energy price cap twice and the UK energy price cap is likely to rise. This is a forecast to £2,800. That's the average bill for a household in the UK, up from uh, just over £1,900. Staggering increase in the cost of, of energy for households and businesses. And another possible cause of stagflation is that there may have been a tilt in the balance of power in the labour market, perhaps a little bit back towards employees. Unemployment's low, it's 3.7% of the labour force. There's 1.3 million unfilled job vacancies. And we're starting to see an acceleration in pay demands, people getting 4, 5, 6% pay rises, uh, which of course added to business costs. So how can we use ADAS analysis diagrams if we get a, uh, if you, or if you want to talk about stagflation in an exam? I'll use the neoclassical model. The initial impulse for the rise in inflation could be external. So what I've shown here is a rise in global commodity prices, which is an adverse supply shock for the UK. So SRS shifts from one to two, an inward shift of short run aggregate supply. That's called an adverse short run supply shock. That causes a fall in real output and uh, an increase in the general price level as shown in the diagram. Now, uh, one of the consequences of this could be of, of the rise in inflation is that there's a wage price response. So people bid for higher wages. They may well get them, particularly if they have strong union power and higher nominal wages in response to higher prices causes an increase in aggregate demand. But equally, 
uh, higher wages causes an increase in unit, unit wage costs. So if wages are rising faster than productivity, that means the unit labour cost or the unit wage cost will go up, again causing aggregate supply to shift. I've shifted it to SRS3. So you can see here that we have another increase in inflation and the growth is slower because the rise in demand is offset by the rise in prices and costs. So we end up somewhere close to Y3, slow growth and an acceleration in inflation. That would be the diagram I would draw for uh, stagflation. And the danger is, of course, that uh, inflation expectations go up. People start to expect higher prices. And as a result, high inflation can become embedded in the economy. So there's your wage by spiral stagflation diagram, which will be a terrific one to use in the exam. And of course, we're seeing inflation going up. This is quarterly data. I haven't shown it month by month. I've shown it by quarter, break the year up into four. And this is the rate of consumer price inflation in the UK. Very low, of course, in the mid, mid part of the last decade, hovering around the 2% mark in 20, up to 2020. Then we get that fall in inflation during the pandemic. And then suddenly, of course, in the last year or so, this steep increase in inflation the first quarter of 2022, inflation averaged 9.1%. Well, what are some of the possible consequences, some of the economic and social costs of stagflation? The first is that real wages may fall. People in work uh, may experience a fall in their real incomes if prices are increasing at a, at a faster rate than wages. And of course, if real, real incomes go down, that's going to have a negative effect on consumer spending. Uh, point two is really important, I think. The fall in incomes adjusted for inflation may hit the poorest families hardest. There's a, a, a real fear that stagflation has a significantly regressive effect on the distribution of income, particularly if inflation is hitting lower income families the hardest, many of whom don't have really the bargaining power in the labour market for wages and welfare benefits to go up. Uh, stagflation can lead to slower real GDP growth, which may then hit uh, business profits and, as a result, planned investment. Um, and then that affects productivity growth and productive capacity because if there's less investment, we're not adding to our capital stock and businesses are having to use older, like perhaps less reliable machinery. In a world of stagflation, lenders such as commercial banks may demand higher nominal interest rates to combat the impact of inflation. So your mortgage becomes more expensive, your home loan, your business loan. And the yields on government bonds may start rising uh, as the markets adjust to a world of higher inflation, making it more expensive to finance a government budget deficit. The impact of stagflation on demand and growth depends in part, and this is a key evaluation point, on how a country's central bank responds. So do they raise interest rates by a significant amount or do interest rates rise only slowly uh, in response to the stagflation risk? A point I wanted to make uh, about the regressive effect of inflation is, is borne out by this data from the New Economics Foundation. It's an interesting chart and it shows that the increase in living costs for the poorest half of families in the UK uh, over recent times, in the last year or so, is nine times higher than for the richest 5% measured as a proportion of income. So it seems as if the rise in inflation is hitting lower income, relatively poorer households, uh, more harshly. Well, some evaluation points on the stagflation risk in the UK. First of all, it doesn't necessarily lead to a steep rise in interest rates. Yes, base interest rates are going up in the States and many other Central banks are increasing interest rates, but the Bank of England response so far, thus far, has been muted. The base interest rates, of course, as you know, have only risen from, what, 0.25% to 1%. Um, they will, they'll go higher in 2022, but they remain well below inflation. So in real terms, interest rates are negative. That said, slower growth uh, is, is on its way. It's going to happen. And so perhaps the slow growth will bring down inflation in 2023-24. So perhaps this rise in inflation will be moderated by weaker growth, in part because people are suffering a big fall in their real wages and their real disposable incomes. Externally, some of the pressures might ease. Who knows what's going to happen in, in the conflict between Ukraine and Russia? But China 
is now growing at the slowest rate for 30 years, which should help dampen down commodity prices. And I guess the risks of a really big sustained wage price spiral are probably not as severe as they were when I was learning economics in the 1970s and 80s. Many markets are now much more contestable, there's more competition, production is using less energy, energy efficiency has gone up, and trade unions in the UK only account for one in four workers in, in jobs. There's less collective bargaining power across the whole economy. So perhaps the risk of, of a wage price spiral following stagflation is, is less severe than one might think. Here's some key revision data to finish with for the exam. So there is a hint of stagflation here in the data. The world economy, global growth, is projected to slow from 6.1% in 2021 to 3.6% in 2022, according to the IMF's World Economic Outlook, published in April 2022. Now, for the UK, we're getting slower growth. So 2021, obviously, a rebound from the pandemic, 7.4% growth. That halved in 2022, that's the forecast. And it's going to more than halve next year, according to the IMF. So growth slowing dramatically. And inflation rising, 2.6% last year, forecast to average 7.4% in 2022. Forecast to come down to 5.3% next year, but still you know, two and a half times what the government's target is. So that's some good data just to have in your mind, maybe in your revision notes ahead of your macro exams coming up. There we go. I thought it was worthwhile spending a few minutes with you on stagflation. Hopefully a useful uh, revision session and for you to build into your macro notes ahead of your exam papers. Stay positive, stay happy, stay focused, please. And uh, see you again sometime really soon.